Hallelujah. <laughs> How's everybody? Are you blessed and highly favored? Confession brings possession. Amen. What you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. We should all be free and empowered tonight. Get ready to set the place on fire. Yes, we're going to roast demons. Glory. How many of y'all soldiers or citizens? Are you a soldier or are you a citizen? Soldier, soldier right. Praise God. That means you're a fighter. You're an interrupter. Everyone say, I'm an interrupter. <laughs> of the devil. <laughs> Not God's plan. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, please. Matthew 7. It's amazing. And, you know, you got to remember something that Satan's kingdom, his foundation is lies and murder. Somebody get that? It's lies and murder. That's their foundation. Lies and murder. That is Satan's foundation. That's their kingdom. Lies and murder. That's why he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. His foundation is lies and murder. And we see that all over. You see on the media. It's amazing how they got a porn star. Hello. And they call him a porn star. Somebody needs to tell her she's going to hell. Who's testifying against the president. Somebody needs to tell this girl, you're going to hell unless you stop what you're doing. Lies and murder. That's what their foundation is. It's amazing to me of all the things that's going on right now. Phenomenal. And how many people are being sucked into it and distracted into it? You, you and I can't be. We got to maintain course. Everyone say maintain course. That's the nice teaching, maintaining course. Of course. Matthew 7, 13. Glory. Maintaining course. Is everybody there? Verse 13. Let's speak it. Enter by the what? Yeah. Narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who do not go by it. There are many who don't go by it. So in other words, there's more, there are more that are in destruction than there are more than going by that. Everybody, is everybody by, or go in by it, sorry. Does everybody understand that? In other words, this narrow gate, for wide is the gate, but broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it, sorry, who go in by it. In other words, there's more going into the way of destruction than there's more than going away to righteousness. Because there's a lot of good people out there. But they're still going in the way of destruction. Because yeah. the only way of God's way is the way of righteousness. Verse 14, because narrow, everyone say narrow. narrow. Narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to what? Life. And there are few who what? Who find it. Wow. So the gate is narrow. This is called your course. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? He's the eternal port. He's the tunnel. This is your course. Narrow. So you got to stay in this place. The word says something powerful in Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High abides by the, under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, he's protected. Nothing can harm them. Doesn't mean you won't go through stuff because the stuff is training. Everyone say stuff. Is training. is training. So when you go through your stuff, it means it's training. Amen? You could take some of that stuff and make a little thing and throw arrows at it or something, you know. 
stuff something. Tell the enemies. Never mind. Uh, verse 15. Is everybody there? Amen. Beware of what? False prophets. Now, wait a minute. He's trying to tell us now. Look at the course is narrow and difficult, and there's not many who stay on course because of so many distractions. And you're going to hear that word a lot because that's when the enemy's ploys is distraction. Distraction. Why? Because he wants to mislead us in so many areas. He wants to get us off course. If he can get us off course, he can get us off will. His purpose is to start us and get us to a place where we start to drift. And then he snags. He sets more traps. So anyways, beware of false prophets. So he's saying, look, at there's false prophets out there who, are, who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. He's telling us these are individuals that are going to try to draw you off course. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. And a good tree cannot bear bad fruit nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Remember, we are fruit inspectors. Amen. Not everyone, now he gives us the conclusion, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, <laughs> but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. Whoa. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who do what? Practice lawlessness. In other words, they got off course. See, the, you can still think that you're doing the right thing. The word even says in the latter days that men will kill believing that they're killing Christians for the will of God, just like Saul, who became Paul. That's happening now. They're actually believing that they're killing. Look at all these goofy religions uh, that believe they're suicide bombers and so forth, actually believing that if they kill people, they're killing it because God wants them to kill them. And then there's a reward in heaven, but they're not going to heaven. Those are false prophets. There are many people who started the right way and drifted and went the wrong way. That's not always how you begin. It's how you end. Amen? Amen. Oh, glory. So the narrow gate is a path. Those are boundaries. Those are borders. It's difficult to stay on course. And few maintain because of distractions, false prophets, pretenders. Only by maintaining the course in the narrow path, those are the uh, only way to maintain that is able, those who maintain that are able to discern by fruits. While you're in that course, you are able to discern. Once you move out, you can't discern no more. You become dull hearted, blinded. And he's warning us of drifting from righteousness course and the narrow path to lawlessness. He warns us. In Luke chapter 10. Ten thirty eight. There are people that are drifting from their course. Many. Globally. Luke 10, 38. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. 
And her sister, her, she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was what? Distracted with much what? Serving. We just read about those individuals that were distracted with casting out devils, laying hands on the sick. They were distracted with ministry and fell into lawlessness because they were justifying themselves by their works instead of by their relationship. So when people fall off course, conviction is no longer sensed. Does everybody understand? Conviction is no longer there. The one of the things that begins to replace conviction is criticism. Blame. Offense. All of these things begin to move people off course. You know, I get calls all the time from people asking about whatever and jobs and this and that and whatever. And one of the things I always ask them before they change jobs is, has God, first of all, have you reached everyone at your job? Because God doesn't just place us in a job for money. He first places us there to be a witness and a sign and wonder. And the whole thing we always must ask ourselves is, am I maintaining my course by maintaining good conduct? Am I allowing the divine nature of Christ to be expressed through me so that others may want, who are struggling, may God can use me in that point? I don't even have to go to them. God will send them. So many people change jobs because they're misled by money or whatever it may be and they get moved off course when God hasn't told them to move. Listen, if your boss ever said something bad to you and you wanted to quit, everyone has been that way. Man, when I was in the world, never mind, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but praise be to God. <laughs> but yes, you will be mistreated. Why? Because people have demons. And they're going to try to do everything they can to get you off course. Has everybody got it? But you can't move until God says move. When you move ahead of time, you become anxious. I get people call all the time. Well, what do you think about this? And you know what they've done? They've already made the other arrangement before they even talk. I don't know why they call me and ask for counsel. I think they're just trying to confirm because they have conviction. But anyway. So Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Ha, ha, ha. Therefore, tell her to help me. She was asking for intervention. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you bonehead. You are worried and troubled about many things. <laughs> and you're still fighting for your life. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. And where was she? At the feet of Jesus. She stayed on course. She didn't let busyness and things distract her. Amen? And so you and I got to be the same way. She was distracted by serving man, serving self, serving family, and all the other stuff of serving, but not taking the time with God and to hear what he has to say. Why? Because he brings us counsel, correction, and direction. And that counsel, correction, direction brings protection, and you are protected on course. Has everybody got it? You are always protected on course. It's when, you know, the word says, I got afflicted when I went astray. Why? Because that person went off course. And God, look, at, then the enemy comes and afflicts us, and God is hoping that we call out to get back on course. Amen? Amen? Oh, hallelujah. So he's in that place. He's trying to bring his counsel, correction, direction, 
protection, and then there's always refreshing. There's always refreshing. In Philippians chapter 3, maintaining course. Locked on so many things that try to get you off course or have gotten you off course and you might have gotten back on right away. Like disappointment. Amen. Disappointment can discouragement. Oh, hallelujah. And God plays with us sometimes. I hate when he does that, but he does it. <laughs> I'll talk more about that in a minute. <laughs> it's because he loves it so much. And he lo it says he loves the death of his saints. <laughs> Anyways, Philippians 3.12. Everybody there? He says, not that I've already attained or am ready, already perfected, but I do what? Press I press on. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Pressing on. Pressing on. You know, one of the great distractions I always sense is your past. Our past can be a tremendous distraction to us. Tremendous. Emotional attachments of past, people, places, and things, accidents, things we've done, things that we should have done, things that we didn't done. It's all done now. <laughs> he said, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended it, but one thing I do is forgetting those things which are behind Reaching forward to the things which are ahead. That's how you stay on course. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let as many as mature have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. We press on. Distractions from the past, emotional attachments, people, places, and things, accidents, hurts, sicknesses, again, offenses, rejections, relationships, all of these things that try to grab hold us from our past, all of our mistakes, even all of our uh, uh, successes can still grab hold of you from your past. Amen? Uh, and, and we get in that place of why, what, where, how, when, and all the other stuff. And it's just a distraction. And then one of the things the enemy wants to do is get you off course so you start searching those things out to try and fix them. Amen? When Jesus says, cast your cares upon me for I care for you, that's where you make exchanges. Amen? You make exchanges. In Proverbs 29. Verse, of course. I believe right now that there is so much in heavy duty attack of the enemy with distractions. And I believe this is why the Holy Spirit is trying to keep us in position so he can fulfill what he wants us to do. It's like people are scattered all over the place. Not in God's will. Believing they are. They're chasing their emotions. Chasing their desires. Proverbs 29 verse uh, 18. Is everybody there now? Are you ready? Can you handle this? It's a biggie. Where there is no revelation, people cast off what? Restraints, but happy is he who keeps the law. <laughs> no revelation, no restraints. Let me share this with you. To maintain course, you must maintain restraints. 
If you do not, if you do not maintain restraints, you cannot maintain course. And what are the restraints over your soul and over your flesh, over your thoughts? Restraints. Restraints is to protect you. We restrain the old man. Who are you restraining? You're turning around and you're tying up the old man. That's who's being restrained. The word says, as a soldier, we should not be entangled with the affairs of this world. Amen? That means the area is the way the world thinks, the way the world sees things. The worldly cultures, we're not entangled in those things. We live from eternity. We are eternal beings. We are not temporary beings anymore. We should, that's why we're supposed to be living from the future to the present. Psalm 16. Psalm 16. The reason why people are emotional wrecks is because they're off course. One day they're on course, the next day they're off. One day they're on, one day they're off. Again, those emotional attacks is from your past. Doesn't come from the future. There is no emotion in the future. Psalm 16, verse 7. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night season. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be what? I shall not be moved. Again, counsel will bring revelation also. Amen? By keeping the Lord in front of us, you won't look behind you. Amen. Again, I'm going to say that. By keeping the Lord in front of you, you won't look behind you. Amen. Then you won't be moved off course. And again, the enemy is going to use anyone or send someone to try and move you off course. You have no idea all of a sudden somebody will pop up somewhere and start talking to you and saying some stupid stuff. Just to move you off course. You got to carry a you know, special so extra sock in your pocket. You can stick it in their mouth. <laughs> Proverbs 16. Glory to God. Proverbs 16 and verse 17. Is everybody okay? Amen. Maintaining course. You know, that's why it's so important. You got to be careful who you hang with. Amen. Associations bring impartations. Quit justifying. Or oh, the rent's cheap. Oh, it's closer to work or this, or whatever it may be. Quit justifying. If you're in a house of thieves and a house of demons, get out. Because you're off course. Amen? Amen? Verse 17. The highway of the upright is to what? <laughs> Depart from the house of evil. <laughs> he who keeps his way preserves his soul. Ah, but God says this. The reason why this person doesn't do this is because he's full of pride. And pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. See, if a person can't discern to depart from evil, God can never trust them. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Now, here it is. He who heeds the word wisely will find good. And whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Depart from evil influence. Depart from yourself. Pride. Exchange that for being humble. 
Heed the word of God in prayer. Jesus maintained a course, didn't he? He was a prime example. Did he get mocked? Did he get persecuted? Amen. Did he get rejected? They even killed him. They couldn't stand his righteousness. <laughs> they couldn't stand it. They considered himself righteous because they didn't know what righteousness was. They only know what good and evil is. So people are going to think that you're conceited and self-righteous because they don't know what righteousness is. They only know what good and evil is. It's going to irritate them. Good. <laughs> good. Now, you're not supposed to be one that's irritated. <laughs> they are, unless you're off course. <laughs> of course. Of course, the formula is to what? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. follow. That's the formula of victory. <laughs> By maintaining the course, you will maintain your identity. Once you start drifting from your course, you begin to lose your identity and become identified with the world again. Amen. Proverbs 29. 29-24. Maintaining course... <clears throat> <laughs> Verse 24, what does it say? Whoever is a partner with a thief hates his own life. He swears to tell the truth but reveals nothing. The fear of man brings a what? Snare. The fear of man brings a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. So we see fear of man, bring, in other words, People are, are serving man more than they are God. The fear of man brings distraction to move off course. Amen? Does everybody understand that? We are servants to the Lord. We labor on to the Lord. We serve individuals in the area of the process of serving God. Amen? Amen? But we should not fear man. If God be for you, who can be against you? 1 Samuel 15. To maintain chorus, you must maintain restraints. And restraints by, come by revelation. Sometimes Revelation says, you in the wrong place. Amen. You're associating with the wrong person. You're agreeing with the wrong thing. First Samuel 15, 22. And Samuel said to Saul, has the Lord our, as God uh, has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. I hear so many people say, oh, I've given up so much. Big deal. He's looking for obedience. He's not looking for how much you gave up. Does everybody get it? I've given up so much. Oh, it was me. Listen, he can restore anything just like that and give you twice as much as you had. But he, everything in our life is an area of gaining trust. Amen. Everything in our life with the Lord is to gain trust. Gain trust. Gaining trust. You're faithful with a little, you get more. Amen. Then he gives you something else. Now you may be faithful in one thing, but not in another. He's looking for faithfulness in all areas. 
Verse 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as an iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. Wow. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandments of the Lord and your words because I, what? Feared the people and obeyed their voice instead of obeying the voice of the Lord. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said, heck no, Saul. I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord enough times, and the Lord has rejected you from becoming or maintaining king over Israel. So he removed them from his position. Does everybody get it? Why? Because he obeyed the voice of fear and the voice of man instead of obeying God's voice. Philippians 4. In verse 6 and 7, be anxious for everything, right? <laughs> man, you want to jump right, I mean, you could, you'll just jump right over the fence, man, be anxious for everything. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by what? Prayer. 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 That's why people are anxious, because they lack prayer. Prayer is what connects you. Worship is what connects you. Amen. Prayer and supplications with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. Not on the run. Hello. More People pray more in their cars than they do in their closets. Because they're always on the run. That's distraction. And don't get me wrong. If you got to do that, you need to get up earlier. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Wow. Anxiousness moves. Let me share with you. You're in the course. Yes. Jesus is before you. Yes. Anxiousness comes. You're right around them. Anxiousness moves people right around God. Does everybody get it? And then right out the, right out the door. It moves right around. Be anxious for nothing. In other words, wait on God and God's timing. God's timing is. And if you don't know what to do, don't do anything. Maintain course. Because if you maintain course, it's God's timing. Amen? Amen? He'll release in his time. I'll give you a quick little story because I, this morning in my prayer time, I've had a rough couple of days. All kinds of stuff has been happening. Everything's been breaking down everywhere. Electricity, pool, everything's going on. <laughs> it's like, sheesh. All kinds of stuff's going on. I'm like, oh, you know. Anyways, this morning I got up, and then you know what? And what I like, I hate. I hate when he doesn't say anything. I hate it. And you can ask my wife. I'm miserable when I don't hear it when I'm. And so this morning I got up and I was praying. I said, I'm in a desert, aren't I? I'm in a desert. You put me in a desert, didn't you? I said, okay. Now that I realize I'm in a desert, I'm just going to wait. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to wait. And all of these things were just coming, and I just kept rolling it off, rolling it off. And then I got a call from someone I haven't seen in a long time. The person says, do you need an air conditioner? Because my air conditioner went out, too. I said, huh? I said, Oh, you decided to speak to me. Praise God. Thank you. I'm out of the desert. <laughs> Things change. 
things change. I hate being in the desert, but God wants to know what you're going to do in the desert. He wants to know if you're going to still maintain course or jump ship. He wants to know if you're going to try and fix it all yourself or you're going to wait on him to do it. Because waiting is essential. Waiting is a part of every Christian's life. Waiting is called endurance. It's also called patience, which is supposed to be a fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Lord, I'm waiting on you, but would you please hurry up? <laughs> Again, he loves the death of his saints. Hallelujah. <laughs> so he wants to know whether you're going to be anxious and try and do it on yourself, or you're going to really, truly, he wants to know whether you've been, what you've been saying, you're going to do. Hello. He wants to check your talk with your walk. Yes, he does. <laughs> Proverbs 3. Anyways, I bypassed as much as I could in my house. <laughs> I got extension cords all over the place. For some reason, the whole wall of outlets went out. The breakers didn't pop. I'm like, what the snap? And on one of the outlets, I got full power. We pulled out every outlet to check and see what was what and whatever. I'm waiting. So I went to the good outlet, plugged in an extension cord. So I got extension cords running everywhere so I could bypass everything. <laughs> I have no AC in that room. All electricity's out. And furniture in there that I've been redoing. So. But God's got a plan. Amen. It's to kill me. <laughs> and you too, you're not left out, so don't. <laughs> You'll get your turn in the desert, let me tell you. Because you're either going in, getting ready to go in, in, or coming out. One or the other. That's a life of a Christian. I prefer more outs than I do ins, but hallelujah. Yes, I try, I just want to put Holy Ghost tape on my mouth so I don't say nothing, you know, but I, somebody say, how you doing? I'm blessed, highly favored. <laughs> Stay away before I kill somebody. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Yes. Why? So you can maintain course. And don't lean on your own understanding. Listen, when it doesn't make sense, so what? This just doesn't make sense. We kept saying that when we checked every stinking outlet. This doesn't make sense. This is, it can't be. It's impossible. That's when I gave it up. Forget it. It doesn't make sense, and I'm not even trying to figure it out. I'll wait. You're going to have to send an angel that can do electric something. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in all of your ways, acknowledge him. And he will do what? He's going to direct your path. So that's all I can do is say, okay, Lord, here you got it. I'm waiting. I'll bypass for now. <laughs> Get a couple of fans in there, no problem. Even the fans up on top don't work. At least a few lights work in that area, so praise God. I don't know if I was going to have to walk around with a flashlight or whatever. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. So maybe it didn't come. I didn't get the answer yet for everything, but it's going to come. And I knew I just had to wait. So I departed. Filled the tub up, went to B&P, bubbles and prayer. <laughs> and I went, oh, Lord, thanks. I got relaxed, 
cried out to dad, okay, Lord, I give it to you. Just reconnect me. That's all I want. Just tell me something. Connect me because you know what? I'm no good like this. I can't go out like this. I'll hurt somebody. I'll say something I shouldn't. And he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And now I can speak out of the spirit and not out of the flesh. Glory. So stop trying to figure it out. Everything, trying to st figure everything and every move out. Trust, acknowledge him first to direct your paths so we can maintain course. Amen. First John chapter 2. Glory. We all go through it. So you're not the only one when you go through this, okay? Amen. You know, the enemy will attack you also with all kinds of stuff when things begin to happen. Maybe I got the wrong job. Maybe I got the wrong thing. Maybe I bought the wrong car. Maybe I bought, maybe I married the wrong person. Maybe whatever. Stay on course. Don't figure it out. It will come. He, the answers always come. But it's hard when you're busy. You have to go get still somewhere. Amen. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, do not love the world or you'll get thrown off course. Order things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the what? The lust of the flesh. That will definitely fly you right off course. The lust of the eyes, those are distractions. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God stays on course. Love of the world, it's music, it's heroes, it's lust, it's approvals, it's culture. Stop agreeing with them. Stop loving them. Stop approving them. Amen? Because this draws you off course. We don't have heroes of the world. Your hero is Jesus. Galatians chapter 2. I told you before, I think, I, 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 you might have heard me many times, every, when, in the morning in my prayer time when I'm done doing what I'm supposed to do, and I'll say, Lord, what would you like me to do today? And I'm going to tell you, about 95% of the time, he says, be like me. Just be like me. What, would you, what can I do to please you today? Be like me. That's, all he, that's what he'll say sometimes. Or he'll start off with that before he gives me instructions. Be like me. Isn't it a greatest joy of a parent is that their child is like their parent in the area of conduct and whatever, as long as it's good conduct. <laughs> Be like me. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 1. Then after 14 years, I, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me and went up by revelation. So he got direction by revelation, didn't he? And communicated to them that the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were of reputation, lest any means I might run or had run in vain. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be what? Circumcised. And this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in who came in as by stealth to spy out our freedom or liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into what? Bondage. To whom we did not yield submission even for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Now, this is powerful. Many people get caught up on religious acts. 
That's what they were trying to do is get him caught up in a religious act. That will move you off course. False humility. Amen? False entitlements. All of these religious acts. And, and even in an entitlement, just because we are, God asks us to do something and we do it, there's that tendency where there's a false entitlement. Well, Lord, I did this for you. Can you do this for me? No, that's not how it is. He did it all for us already. Amen? And those will move people off course, these religious acts and false humilities. Go to Colossians chapter 2. Let no one judge you in food or in drink. Or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substances of what? Christ. Okay. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding in those things which he has not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head. Ooh from which all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an, an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. These things will lead people off course. Amen? People have a, cons they think because of the way they dress, whether they don't put on makeup, whether they whatever, all kinds of foolishness and religious stuff that the, what they're trying to do is make themselves better. You and I can't make ourselves better. Does everybody get it? Of course, we don't want to walk around half nude and whatever, stuff like that, and entice other people's lust in their mind. But only God, we're, we're, we're perfected in him. Amen? What we want to express is the character of Christ. That's what needs to be expressed in everything that we do. These are all false doctrines that move people out. Of, look at what does the word tells us, doctrines of demons and so forth. Be careful when somebody gives you a book. Amen? Look at Darwin. How, look at that theory Darwin did to so many people. How many people have moved away from the true reality that God is the creator of man and then fell, fell away and thought that we came from animals? I mean, come on. When Adam named the animals, does it make sense? Galatians chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. Maintaining the course. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 7, please. He said, you ran well. What hindered you from obeying the truth or hindered you from maintaining course? This persuasion did not come from the Lord who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you and the Lord that you will find, have no other mind. But he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offenses of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. So do not use this liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. Why? Because it will move you off course. But rather love, serve, and serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you become consumed by one another, which will move you off course. The flesh, you know, sowing and reaping, sowing to the flesh, reap corruption, moves people off course. The love of money, laziness, 
Unconsistency, that's why the word says, forsake not to assemble. Offense, anger, unforgiveness, all of these areas, bitterness, they will move you right off course real quick. We must maintain course, maintain restraints, and be willing to accept correction, counsel, which brings revelation. Amen? I'm going to close at 2 Timothy chapter 4. Listen, what we want to do is take one day at a time. Sometimes it's one moment at a time. The enemy likes to flood you in with all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, when he begins to attack, it's like every voice of hell comes out and trying to tell you what to do. And they're all liars. And the distraction tries to come. And, and this distraction is trying to do is trying to move us off course so that we become anxious. Amen? And then we begin to carry this burden with oppression and heaviness and everything else. Listen, that means we're off course. Because when you're on course, you're in peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Unless God is bringing you through the desert. But you'll know it. Because nothing works. He's just saying, wait on me. Nothing just seems, I don't get it, man. I'm casting out with this. I nothing. Where are you at? You said you'd never forsake me and leave me. He didn't. He just wants to know what you're going to do. You know why? He's getting ready to release something to you. 2 Timothy 4. I hope it's big. <laughs> Take one day at a time and one project at a time. Complete it. See, one of the things the enemy tries to do is get you all scared or brain so you don't complete nothing. Then you jump off course. Verse 1. Let's speak it together. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead and is appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Now, in season and out of season means doesn't matter how you feel. Amen. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have what? Itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. In other words, they're off course. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Everyone here is an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For I'm ready, I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the what? Good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid out for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Maintain your course. Amen? Amen? Humble yourself. Repent when it's time to repent. The lack of repentance will definitely draw you off course. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't justify. Repent. Amen? Amen. Put everything under the blood. And everything putting under the blood will keep you on course. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace to keep us on course that we may maintain our identity of who we truly are in you and who you are in us. I pray blessing over each and every one and this seed be protected. Lord, continue to release revelation and reality to each and every one so that we don't look back, but we continue to press forward, living from the future 
and not from our past. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stage rest with the Lord.